Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Did you did you think that was a joke? Uh, well, no. The rest of these segments in this video are going to be in four by three because I have a mental disorder, and it's called dedication to the bit, bitch. Zack Snyder is a well-known, famous Hollywood director known for making movies. And nobody is allowed to get mad at me for that because that statement is neutral. Snyder's movies, more specifically his superhero movies, are widely considered by critics to be not, not good. good. They feel soulless, drab, bleak, boring, edgy, messy. All of these criticisms are things that people have levied against these movies and you'll be very hard pressed to find a critic who actually likes them. So let's go looking for critics who do! Twitter. Now, you might shit your pants because of this opinion, but... Twitter is bad. As a California native, I compare Twitter most to Los Angeles. Los Angeles is a dirty, grimy, filthy, greasy, stinky shithole that I despise with the passion, but th the food's good enough to warrant going back from time to time. As someone who reads or did read a lot of picture books, one of the sub-communities I frequently see on Twitter is the comic book community. As someone who frequents comic book Twitter, I can very easily tell you that this sub-community is one of the most wretched and absolutely miserable places I have ever seen on the surface web. Everyone hates everything, civil discussion is a non-option, and if you have an opinion that's outside the norm, you will be chastised for even thinking about it. Terms like racist, sexist, and even are just thrown around like it's absolutely fucking nothing, which is made even more disappointing because there are a lot of <laughs> racist, sexist, and not. And yes, I'm very aware that this is the vocal minority, but the content is pushed so much so frequently that it honestly feels like it isn't sometimes. But there exists in the sub community a sub sub community full of people who are ill mannered, wretched, and it's the Snyder bots. You knew that already. I didn't have to do all that. A Snyder bot is somebody who is so overly dedicated to the concept of Zack Snyder's DC universe that they actively make it everybody else's problem. Uh, by the way, sorry if this intro seems disorganized. There's just a lot of context to hit in a very messy way, so just paint tight. I don't know when the nomenclature of Snyder bots became being actively used. However, we all know who they are and what they want. They want back Zack Snyder's DC Universe. Alright, so a brief explanation for like the DC Universe for all of those who don't know, but essentially Snyder made a couple of DC films that Warner Brothers wanted to tie into each other and they were going to have him head the universe, or at least it looked like they were going to have him head the universe at a time where Marvel ran the world. But then they made good money, but they didn't make enough money because they wanted Marvel money. So they started incorporating elements of Marvel movies into DC movies so that they kind of became the same thing except DC movies were significantly worse. And then they start started making less money and, uh, um, and then uh, they, they fired Zack Snyder and have just recently put on James Gunn as the head of uh, DC Incorporate so that they can make a cohesive and fulfilling universe since his films were critically acclaimed banana. Now, I want to make it abundantly clear. There is nothing wrong with being passionate about media, especially film, and I can very much understand frustrations with not being able to see a series of films that you love play out. I get it, I get it. The general consensus is that these movies leak ass, and I do agree, but if I was promised something that I liked that nobody else gave a shit about, like a, like a Logic album, and I never got it, I would be pissed. But see, I wouldn't be pissed about it for six fucking years. Though the Snyderverse has only been officially recently discontinued, it has been very clear to me at least since the original Justice League that this series was cooked. After that movie, Snyder had involvement with literally zero of these films up until WB said he could make his four hour long mega movie and then piss off forever. By the way, uh, let, let's talk about that. The Snyder Cut of Justice League is, in my humble opinion, the greatest mistake this generation of humanity has ever made. Not, not, not because it's a bad movie, I, I mean, it gets good, uh, two hours in. But it taught the absolutely detrimental lesson to the youth that if you really want something, you just have to bitch and whine and complain long enough until you get a response. And if the response isn't what you wanted, 
Keep going until it changes. And I, I guess we can determine this as one of the first of three general traits that the Snyder bots have. So, so th throw up a cool transition screen. Let's talk about that. <laughs> So there's this quote from this game I've never played that's used way too frequently on the internet, but it's almost picture perfect for the point I'm trying to make. So I'm gonna go ahead and reuse it anyway. Insanity is doing the same fucking thing over and over again and expecting shit to change. As previously mentioned, the Snyderbots learned from ZSJL. Uh, that abbreviation is almost as long as the regular title, goddamn. They learned that if you really just want something, all you have to do is whine loud enough for long enough. Hashtag restore the Snyderverse. Hashtag sell Zack Snyder's Justice League to Netflix. Hashtag bring back Henry Cavill. Hashtag fire James Gunn. We will get to that one later. All right, Snyder bros, let's be real with ourselves here. The only reason Snyder League came to fruition was because WB needed a selling point for their shiny new streaming service. Everyone knew about the colossal failure of Justice League, and people wanted to see a version of that movie that wasn't a total colossal disaster, and WB knew that. But man, now, now that it's out, I don't think WB thinks that the general public gives a shit about any of the other cuts of this movie, and I, I gotta be honest, I think they're right. I would rather take it up the butt from Dreamy Bull than watch Suicide Squad 2016 again. And I don't think an extended mega cut is going to change that. And I know for sure I am not the only one who thinks that way. However, there are so many people backing this release the air cut hashtag because they're still under this delusion that they're in the majority and they're going to get it. By the time this video comes out, August 5th will have long passed. And I guarantee you that the only reason that air cut is trending is either because because people are making fun of it, or it just didn't trend at all. And they just don't stop. You saw the amount of hashtags. These people genuinely believe that they are going to get the Snyderverse back if they just don't stop e-begging. Now, if these are people I like, it'd be persistence, but they smell bad, so they're labeled under insanity. Okay, but on the real, this isn't a very big deal. I, I mean, sure, it's a little annoying to have these hashtags spammed literally everywhere, but I mean, it's Twitter. Being a little annoying is a trait that most users come prepackaged with. So, let's get into the things that Snyderbots do that really stink. The shit that people really hate these guys for. Now, when a Snyderbot is told that somebody dislikes Zack Snyder's DCEU or that their constant spamming of certain hashtags to get trending is annoying and insufferable, what do you think their response is? Do they respond back with A, a mature and adult conversation as to why they value Snyder's movies so much, maybe explain why those movies mean so much to them? B, be the bigger person and just not respond to anything that anybody asks them at all, or C, This is just a piece of paper that says krill yourself. These Snyder bots are angsty, temperamental, prepubescent 13 year olds that think the world revolves around them and criticism of Snyder is direct criticism of them. They've created this ironic nomenclature of real DC fans and it applies to everyone who disagrees with them, essentially. And when responding to real DC fans, they cycle through a variation of responses that all range in extremity, but all typically end in the same reaction of your brain is smooth. So, the first problem I see a lot of is lying. So the first tweet here is just a statement saying that Zack Snyder's uh, DC Universe would have ended with Flashpoint, and then this guy responded back with, I'm really starting to think that Zack was set up by the studios to fail. It has to be something bigger that they're not telling us. Maybe Zack is not pro-establishment, whereas Gunn, Whedon, Hamada are all corporate hacks. Really the only person here who is even a semblance of dead to rights is Whedon, but you just throw Gunn and Amada in there with zero reason other than the fact that Gunn was the person who took over after Snyder left. You're so salty that you didn't get your way that you've created this entire fanfic narrative about how the system conspired against your favorite movie director and set him up for failure. Why would they do that? Because Zack isn't pro-establishment?
Then why the fuck is he gonna work with Warner Brothers in the first place? I don't know, man. It kind of just sounded to me like you pieced together a bunch of things that sound guilty, but didn't actually think it through. Number two is a little something I like to call the blame game. As previously mentioned, Snyder bots are ranked number two behind girlfriend you should probably break up with in terms of not letting shit go. One of the byproducts of this, however, is an overwhelming grudge against DC content that is either not made by Snyder or is enjoyed by a significant amount of his detractors. A good example of this is what's currently happening happening with the new Superman cartoon. As someone who has a base level understanding of who the character of Superman is, I can confidently say that my adventures with Superman is a great Superman show with incredible characters and a clear understanding and love for the character of Superman and what he stands for. Guess what Snyderbots think? I'm, I'm trying to read this tweet word for word, but it's just, it's, it's worded so terribly. The grammar is awful. This is the first time I see a clip from the show and ain't no way this is the show that real DC fans use against Snyder Superman. It's a kid's show. I thought it's some adult character study the way some people were talking about it. All right, look, I don't got a problem with other people's opinions, all right? I'm a 19-year-old adult. I'm more concerned about how I'm going to feed my 28 children rather than some dude on the internet disagreeing with me. However, what I do have a problem with is people telling me that their opinions are superior to mine because that's when I have to bust out the objective opinion. Now look, I've never been much of a DC guy, I've always been more of a Marvel guy, but I do have enough love and respect for DC's characters to fully and confidently say that my adventure Superman is so much better than Man of Steel Superman in every conceivable way. Man of Steel Superman is drab, bleak, boring, hopeless, whereas my adventures with Superman Superman is caring, kind, awkward, charming, and didn't snap Zod's neck. Blunt time! If you don't understand the problem with Superman killing Zod, you are, in fact, not a Superman fan. And again, you are allowed to like that, but you are not allowed to tell me I don't understand Superman because I don't. Also, the whole the Adult Swim cartoon is a kid's show argument uh, speaks to your intelligence, honestly. Just because something is goofy and silly does not mean it's for kids. Also, also, you haven't even watched the goddamn show! No matter what you think about my opinion on Man of Steel, it will always have more weight to it than your opinion on my adventures with Superman because I actually watched the fucking movie. Again, Snyderbots think the world revolves around them, and yet at the same time, they also think that 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 exact same world is against them. There is no rhyme or reason to any of it, it's just anybody who is in the comic book Twitter community that isn't explicitly pro Snyder it has caught astray at some point. Sometimes it almost just feels like they draw out of a hat who to be mad at for what that day. Alright, so this Cosmonaut Variety Hour video has done irreparable damage to the comic book movie community. All right, yeah, that's good. Let's go back to the numbers. Number three, meat writing. Not necessarily a criticism or a response, but it will be very important very soon. Zachary's minions have a really bad habit of putting him in these positions of greatness. I would even go as far to say that some of them treat him like a good movie god. This includes photoshopping him into embarrassing pictures like this or doing a little something called Zack Snyder is the blueprint. Every conceivable trope in modern action adventure movies is a direct result of Zack Snyder's superior filmmaking skills and also his massive crotch. This guy here is trying to claim that Zack Snyder's one take action scene in one of his other movies directly inspired the one take action scene in Guardians 3. Yeah, because it's not like there have been one take action scenes in that movie or 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 in that movie. Don't worry. We will get to the gun stuff soon. And number four is something I affectionately refer to as deplorable shit. This niche internet micro-celeb Steve Rogers on Twitter was getting harassed by a couple of Snyder fans because supposedly he was Islamophobic to one of them. Uh, mm, that's not true. It wasn't supposed. It was wrong. D they lied. Now, I'll be honest, I couldn't find any motivation as to why they wanted to do this, but... 
some something tells me that people lying about other people being racist doesn't exactly have a good reason typically and going through these maggots is back and forth is like the most depressing thing ever it's just a couple of low lives trying to convince themselves that they're the good guys while spreading lies about this other guy however this echo chamber never really got that far off the ground it was just these guys who believed it so let's take a look at the one that unfortunately has <laughs> All of the actions of Snyderbots, what they do to people, is exacerbated tenfold when it comes to James Gunn. The Snyderbots hate James Gunn. I, I hate is a very strong word. I'm sure these guys don't hate him. They don't have a reason to hate him. They, they probably just hate his movies for stupid reasons, right? One of the things Snyderbots accuse James Gunn of is being a racist and a child predator. People's reasoning for James Gunn being labeled a racist is because back in the day, he posted a lot of tweets that were pretty cringe. However, we can in fact deduce that Gunn is not a racist as he has made multiple statements bashing Orange Man. Uh, he has made an entire series mocking white supremacists and he consistently backs and defends his POC actors. Now, the uh, pedo thing is a result of James Gunn in fact hosting a... Uh, pedo themed party which um is a thing however it is very much worth mentioning that this is old as hell and it was old as hell when it came out and everybody within this party was a more than consenting adult and it's just probably more than likely some kind of weird joke shock humor thing humor was weird man we can assess that gun is in fact not a child predator because at the time of this recording he has yet to diddle any kids but god do snyder bots take these claims and run with them that's james gunn for you he also gave the live action debut of white dragon a white supremacist villain from dc comics during black history month did you watch the show? I have to wonder if you watched the show. You know, he is not only the villain, but he gets shot to death by the main character. You are not supposed to like this guy. He is actively made as despicable and hateable as possible. I... How does your brain work this way? No more money for Pedo Gun. James Gunn is one trash human being, Pedo, pathological liar, Epstein Island visitor, a filthy motherfucker in every aspect. You are a liar and a Pedo. This dude right here is more willing to defend Jared Leto, the dude with the alleged sex cult against the Pedo allegations but not James Gunn. I'm going to be extremely generous and play around with the concept of James Gunn being a racist and a Pedo. So, if James Gunn is a weirdo, then by your own logic, I don't even know what Zack Snyder is because he has been on interview saying no lie that he wanted Batman to be in prison! And the only reason he wanted it was because he thought it was cool and dark, so if Gunn, again, is a racist and a pedo, I don't even know what Zack Snyder is. A aside from those big two, Snyderbots just shoot at Gunn with literally anything that they can find. They have accused Gunn of hating the past actors of the DCEU. They have accused Gunn of ruining DC, even though he has released one movie and one show and has yet to release anything else at the time of this recording. Here's one where somebody just straight up got James Gunn to respond, and when he responded to the dude that was actively lying on his name, people started claiming he was irresponsible and immature sure for doing that y you can't win with these guys and real dc fans please write in the comments why do you think i am so scared to restore the snyderverse i really can't wait to see your honest and logical answers i'm so happy to show you the new superman and i know a minority is going to be mad but i want you to know that we don't need henry cavill gal gadot or even ben affleck now is my time to shine and i will show the world that i am a better director than zack snyder who i secretly adore but i don't think i gotta say anything here you know, actually, I'm not going to say anything here. I, I think I'm just going to let it be. I feel like if I say nothing, it will speak a thousand more words than I ever could. And you know, with the amount of shooters for Snyder here, it, it makes me just like worry about how badly Snyder is reacting. You know what I mean? Like he must hate DC and hate James Gunn because 
there's no way there's actual people who are just shooting for him because that's they they think he's mad, right? Looking forward to taking my kids to see Blue Beetle. Hashtag representation matters. Hashtag Blue Beetle. What? Gunn claims that Snyder has reached out to him personally to congratulate him and express support over the creative choices he was making to DC. Gunn claims all of these things and given the fact that Snyder could very easily come out against them but hasn't and has in fact promoted one of these new movies, we could probably deduce that these are all true. We have seen tons and tons of harassment and disturbing AI deepfakes and lies and self-inflicted gaslighting and it's all to put down one guy while putting up another when those two guys don't even have beef with each other. When the guy that they're putting up and fighting for has long given up the thing that they're fighting for. So, I would like to ask... This whole fucking time, all of this has been for nothing. Actually, you know what? No, fuck this. I think I've made my point. Have I made my point? These freaks are delusional, disgusting, they smell weird, and they're clearly never going to stop because they are still suckling from the teat of this envisionment of Snyder that they have in their brains. So, I want to really quickly take a peek at the other side of this incredibly flaccid and pathetic internet. War. I see a large chunk of people on the other side claiming that Zack needs to make a statement against these toxic fucks and that in some way he is held responsible for them. This topic of somebody being in charge of their toxic fan base is something I intend to cover in the very near future, but for a brief and abridged version, it's not Zack's fault that the people who ride or die for him are lunatics. Plus, this guy very clearly lives a happy and fulfilling life because he never uses Twitter. The Blue Beetle tweet was his last tweet, and that was on July the 30th. And the tweet before that one was on July the 9th. And the last time he liked something was a post in 2016. So I would be surprised if he even knew a Snyder bot was. So yeah, Zach seems like a chill guy. He just happened to accidentally create one of the most toxic fan bases ever. So I, I felt like I should just throw him a bone there. Blind obedience is insufferable. I see so many Snyder bots resent the fact that people refer to them as cultists. Now, I did refer to them as cultists in the title of this video, but let's just be real, that was all for clicks. But you have to understand, normal fandoms of people do not harass others for not agreeing with them. Normal fan bases do not claim that somebody is racist for not agreeing with them. You can't get mad at people calling you cults because in a lot of ways, you share characteristics of one. This blind devotion to a leader that you know nothing about and likely doesn't know anything about you. And look, you can like Zack Snyder movies. The, the point of this video is not to detract from Snyder fans, but if you actually sat through this and got mad and tried to justify every single person's responses here, um... That's probably not a good sign, man. That's all for this video. Like and subscribe, or I'll... <laughs> oh, I can't keep that one in. Can't keep that one in. You can follow my second channel, XP's Dumpster. Uh, you can follow my Instagram. You can follow my Twitter. And you can uh, subscribe to Scott the Was. <laughs> hey, that's all for this video. Go... Fuck yourself. What's up?